You may consider yourself an alcoholic, but are you such an alcoholic that you would journey through the realms to the hall of a giant just to steal his cauldron? Well, if you are that much of an alcoholic, get help, man. I mean, Madness, and welcome back to the Lore Lodge. Last week on the Lore Lodge, we talked about Thor's encounter with... Fuck, what did we talk about? The, the giant threw him... Right! Thor lost his hammer, and then he pretended to be a girl to get it back. Right, okay, now we understand. So that's what we did last week. This week, we're going to be talking about the time that Thor and Tyr, needing to uh, gather a larger cauldron, decided to go fishing. So... Uh, there's a giant named Aegir in Norse mythology, and he is the embodiment of the sea, but he's known more for being uh, really good at making mead. So good at making mead that he is actually the favorite meter of all of the Aesir gods. So he's hosting a feast one day, and all of the Aesir go, and what they realize quite quickly is entirely, like partially due to Thor himself being a complete drunk, uh, they don't have a big enough cauldron to make mead for everybody. So Thor, upset at this, and Tyr, always looking for solutions, decide that they're going to go visit Tyr's father, Hymir. Hymir has a gigantic cauldron, and Tyr knows this. But what Tyr also knows is that his dad is kind of a, kind of a dick, you know? It's just, it is what it is. So Tyr and Thor arrive at Hymir's dwelling. We don't really get a good idea of how long this takes, it just says that they go. Presumably, the feast at Aegir's is still going on, so I guess they're just feasting for a very long time. But they get there, and the Poetic Edda tells us that uh, Tyr really hates his grandmother. There's literally no other information about his grandmother, it's just that he hates her. His mother, however, is very loving, and would give them the cauldron, but it's only polite that they ask Himir himself. So Himir comes in, and uh, his wife tells them, oh my gosh, guess what? Look who's here to visit. It's your son. And Himir is like, oh, cool. And he stares so hard at a shelf that all of the cauldrons fall off of it, except the one that Tyr is there to recover. So, irritated, but still bound by the laws of hospitality, our friend Himir uh, brings in three oxen and mead and everything for them to all have a nice meal together. And Thor alone eats an entire ox. This is kind of a motif with Thor, is he just eats a lot. The, the Thor of uh, Norse mythology is very, very strong, but also kind of has a beer gut. He's, he's not like, you know, he's not sculpted, so to speak. Realizing now that uh, they're not gonna have enough food, uh, Himir decides, also, by the way, Himir, not to be confused with Ymir. Ymir is the, like, proto-giant, the primordial being that they, uh, that they slay, and from his body the world is made. Um, that's a different legend, and if you want to hear about it, go back and watch our video on Ragnarok. Uh, that is kind of the whole Norse mythology story all told, all rolled into one, the, 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 you know, bird's eye view, what is Norse mythology. So, uh... Himir decides he's going to go whale hunting, and Thor, not to be left out, goes with him. And Himir is like, you are a baby, you are small, you are a little man, you cannot do much to me. And Thor's like, I'm a better fisherman than you. And Himir kind of like laughs that off. So they go, and rapidly Himir manages to pull up two whales. And he's, he's like, all right, this, this is enough whales. Like, there's, this, is a, this is plenty of whales. And Thor's like, it's not enough whales. And Himir humors him, so him, Thor takes an ox head, hooks it to a line, and he yeets it into the ocean. It stays there for a little bit, and then he gets a bite. And Thor's like, all right, all right, I got this. He starts reeling it up. He's like, this is kind of heavy. This is, a little, this is a weirdly heavy fish. And then a head breaks out of the water that's not a fish. It's not a fish at all. It's Jormungand, the Midgard serpent, Bane of Thor. And there's, there's like three separate times that Jormungand and Thor actually duke it out. This is the second time. Uh, the, the third time the world ends. Um, but he gets Jormungand up, and he, he's ready to go. He's ready to take this guy down. So Thor takes Mjolnir and bashes uh, Jormungand over the head with it. But Hymir is horrified. He is, he is shocked. He's scared. He knows the prophecies with Ragnarok. He knows what could happen if Thor and Jormungand do battle. So he quickly takes out his knife and cuts the line. And Jormungand sinks into the waves. 
Thor, on the other hand, not super happy about this, turns around and whacks Ymir in the head with Mjolnir. Uh, Ymir falls overboard unconscious and floats to shore. Ymir has a very hard head, so he's all right. Uh, Thor takes everything back to Ymir's house, uh, including the two whales, and they feast on their whales. And then as they're getting ready to leave, Tyr and Thor are like, hey man, um, you're supposed to give us a cauldron. And Ymir decides that, you know what, he's got one more challenge for, for Thor. And he says, all right, you can have the cauldron since you think you're so strong, but only if you prove your strength. And to prove your strength, you have to take my magical unbreakable cup and break it. Uh, this is kind of like the cut down the tallest tree in the forest with a hem. You know, the, uh, the Monty Python bit. So it's kind of like that. Uh, and so Thor's like, I, I can break a cup, and he slams it into a wall, and then the wall falls down, and the cup is fine. Now, uh, in what I can only assume is some sort of marital dispute, uh, Himir's wife, Tyr's mother, uh, goes to Tyr and says, hey, your dad is, like, the most hard-headed guy on the planet, like, in the world, if you just, like, whack him with it, try that. So Thor turns around, takes the cup, and slams Himir in the head with it, the cup shatters, falls to the ground. Ymir has a headache because he's, he's now been whacked by a hammer and by an unbreakable magic cup. Um, so he's not super happy at this point. He really just wants Thor to leave. So he's like, all right, take the cauldron and, and you may go. You, you may you may go. Which, like, if you just got bonked twice by one of the ice here, you'd probably also just want them out of your house. But, you know, kids will be kids. After this, Thor and Tyr decide, you know what, it's time to head home. They take the cauldron, they go to Aegir's uh, cave, his, his palatial estate, whatever kind of thing he's living in. He's a Jotun, so it's probably like, you know, some, some frosty, like, cave. I don't know, but maybe warm on the inside, maybe a little cozy, a little homey, you know? Um, Thor gets inside, presents the cauldron, Aegir makes mead for everybody, and they make very merry. I really want to learn how to make mead. I would love to make some mead. That said, that is our second part in the Mythology of Thor series here on the Lore Lodge. If you like what we're doing, you can subscribe to us on Patreon. We have $1 through $100 tiers. Even $1 helps. If you're not up for that, then please like, share, and uh, leave a comment on this video. It really helps us with the algorithm, and it helps us to get more ad revenue so we can continue doing the show. Uh, other than that, we have our merch at thelorelodge.shop, and you can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, wherever, at the Aiden Mattis. And you can follow our technical director, Aiden Thornbury, at Director Aiden on Instagram and TikTok. Once again, I'm Aiden Mattis, and thanks for stopping by the Lore Lodge.